Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be carrying out a valve clearance check on the Triumph Sprint 900. Now, this is the last of the service elements that I want to check on this uh, on this bike before we bring it back into use. Um, obviously, if you haven't seen the other videos where we've done, uh, you know, like renewing the rear brakes, uh, carb cleaning and all that sort of stuff, go, uh, go back through, uh, check them out. They're in the playlist. And um, yeah, uh, as I said, check them out and um, it'll bring you uh, up to speed as to where we are with this bike right now. Okay, so uh, in order to carry out a valve clearance, all we really need is a set of feeler gauges and a few standard hand tools. Tank's got to come off, the cam cover's got to come off, and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this cover here uh, in order for me to be able to rotate the crank. Um, I will pull the plugs out just to make turning the crank a little bit easier, although that's not necessarily required. Um, it just uh, means that you can turn it over without um, the compression. Uh, and other than that, we just need some gaskets. So here is a uh, cam cover gasket along with the profile ones for the bolts. And this one is the gasket, uh, Genuine Triumph as you can see, for that cover down there. So let's get some tools out and let's uh, get started. <laughs> Okay, first thing that we're going to do is, um, as I said before, is I'm going to uh, pull the plugs out of each of the cylinders. So I've got me, uh, let me suck it right here. Now, as, I, as I've said in the past, I don't have a spark plug tool that fits the plugs on the Sprint 900 because they're a strange size, but a deep 18 mil socket does the job fine. Now obviously, the middle cylinder, cylinder two, the plug is a bit of a pain to get out. So what I'll do, I'll mess around with that and then I'll bring you back in once I've got them all out. There we go. Pull the tools out. You have to really use a UJ on that middle one, just to get her out. And there we go, and get the magnet. And pull out the plug, and there we are. That is all three plugs out. So what we're gonna do next is pull the bolts out holding the cam cover on. So there's eight of them, two this side, two this side, and then the cam cover will come off and then we can remove the old gasket. Okay, these, I don't particularly wanna round these off, but they're gonna be tight. There we go, that's, that's one. Now, they look like they've been off before and that one looks, like I need to work on it. I'll come back to that one shortly. Yeah, I want I want the socket to be fully seated. There we go. Yeah, that one. The the, the socket didn't go quite all the way in. So I want to make sure. Right. I'll spin all these off. I'll get these ones, these awkward ones out, and the ones under the frame, they're going to be a pain. I'll probably have to use a regular style Allen key for those. Um, but once I've got them all off, we'll be able to pull the cam cover off, and I'll bring it back in at that point. Okay, so there is all eight bolts removed from the cam cover. So the cam cover isn't being held on by anything other than 
the uh, uh, probably a little bit of sealant uh, around the gasket. So we'll attempt to remove that in a second. Just want to point out that two of the bolts are slightly longer than the other six, and that's because these ones belong at the front where the uh, where the sprockets for the camshafts are. So uh, that's the reason why they're longer. Right, I'll put them to one side. What I've also done here is I've just removed the two coils off this side because it'll probably make it easier for me to get the cover out uh, without them in there because there's not a lot of room to maneuver. And I don't particularly want to have to go to the effort of taking the fairings off just to remove the cam cover. So let's attempt to remove it. Now, um, I anticipate that this is probably going to be quite well stuck on there. I don't know how long it's been on there, but um, give it a good pull. And it, oh, it came off actually a lot easier than than I anticipated. A lot easier. And then what we need to do now is maneuver it out from the bike. Like so. We've got the gasket. There we are. And there is the gasket and there's the cam cover. So I'll throw that to one side. And what we'll do prior to putting this on is um, give it a really good clean. Um, and then obviously refit the brand new gasket before dropping it back onto the cylinder head. Okay, so now, now we've got the cover off, we can see each of the valves. Um, what I'll do again is uh, obviously round here, give this a good, a good clean off because there's been sealant put on here. Um, generally, I don't think uh, I don't think the manual actually asks you to put sealant on here. Um, generally, you would normally only put it around where the half moons are from the machining process on the cylinder head, uh, just to help those seat. But uh, yeah, it's uh, not going to do any harm. Obviously, it helped, and being a triumph, these like to uh, wheel a little bit of oil on the floor at the best of times, just for fun. Um, generally, when there is no oil on the floor underneath your triumph, it's a good indicator that there's none in it. So uh, yeah, the uh, Anything we can do with the Triumph to uh, keep the oil inside the engine is going to be a bonus. So, anyway, uh, all joking aside, what we need to do next is we need to move on to the, uh, the actual process of rotating the cams, uh, the camshafts, uh, into the position they need to be in order to carry out the check. So what I'm going to do next, pop this cap off uh, and have a look inside. Okay, as you can see, I've given... Uh, given the, uh, the, the, the sealing surface on the top of the cylinder head a really good clean um, and got rid of all the, uh, the old sealant. So that's ready really now to um, accept the brand, new, uh, the brand new gasket and it should, uh, should do okay. I'll, I'll have a look at the manual and see what it says about sealant, but um, if nothing else, I'll definitely put some in the, uh, in the little half moon crescents at the end of the shafts. Anyway, moving on, what we need to do next is take this cover off. Now, what I will say is this isn't 100% necessary. Taking this cover off, you can actually achieve this just by putting the bike into, gear, into a high gear and rotating the wheel will um, obviously turn the camshafts because obviously it'll turn the engine over. Uh, and obviously having the uh, spark plugs removed will make that really, really easy. But what I want to do is obviously I want to demonstrate the way to do it, as the manual says uh, as well. So what I'll do, I'll crack all these bolts off, these are just 8mm and spin them all out now behind here you can see there is actually sealant there because this is the uh, the pickup for the timing and obviously it goes through a rubber gasket and um, if it's going to leak anywhere it'll leak there so you use a little bit of silicon when we uh, reassemble reassemble it uh, just to ensure that we don't get a leak at that point because uh, the last thing you want is to assemble something for it to then leak because it just makes it a pain. Now, as you can see here, I've got an oil pan because it's very possible that we will get a little bit of a little bit of oil come out. When we take the cover off, she is moving, but she's a little bit she's a little bit stiff. There we go. 
and here you can see the pickup for the ignition timing going through that gasket. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a ring spanner or a socket or something like that on here and we use that to uh, to turn the engine over instead of messing around with the wheel and gear. Um, it's just the way I prefer to do it. Either way will work 100%. It's entirely up to you. Um, Anyway, so let me go get some tools out, we'll turn it over and then we'll look at what we're going to be doing with the actual cameras themselves. Okay, as you can see, I've got a 24mm spanner on the, uh, on the nut on the end of the crank. And now what we need to do is obviously we need to uh, concentrate on what we're going to be doing with the actual uh, cameras themselves and the valves. So, as you can see here, um, the, the, uh, the cam lobes on Cylinder three inlet are actually pointing straight down. So that means that the valves are uh, wide open um, and the cam lobes on the exhaust on cylinder three are, um, are closed or almost fully closed. So what we need to do is um, we need to rotate the camshaft so that the cam lobe is diametrically opposing the valve on which it acts, i.e. pointing directly opposite the valve. So if that's the valve, the cam lobe is pointing perfectly away from it. So what I'll do, I will turn the nut on the end of the crank until this one here points directly opposite the valve, which it is now. So this is obviously the inlet one on uh, cylinder three. So what I need to do is get my feeler gauges. Now, the, uh, the clearance for an inlet uh, valve uh, is 0 0.10 of a millimeter to 0 0.15 so you've got a 0 0.05 millimeter tolerance um, the exhaust is 0.15 to 0 0.20 again you have a 0 0.05 of a millimeter tolerance however they are not the same inlet and exhaust are slightly different so what I've got here, 0.10, because I'm going to be doing the uh, the inlet ones first. I've also got a 0.15, so what we'll do is, I've, obviously, if the 0 0.10 goes in really, really easily, we'll check to, uh, with the 0.15 to make sure that that one doesn't also fall inside. And then, obviously, what we'll need to do is, using a combination of different gauges, is gauge what the actual clearance is. Um, more on that uh, in a moment. Anyway, so, I've got my 0 0.10, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply feed it in to the gap between the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the um, the cam and the lifter itself, and as you can see, that one's going in there really, really easily. Now, there is not really what I would call a light drag. Now, what you would expect to feel is an ever such a light drag on the gauge, um, and that was a little bit too easy going in there. There, there wasn't really a, a, a drag at all. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the 0.15, which is that one, and I'm going to put that one in. And the 0.15, just making sure I haven't doubled them up there. Yep, right, so the 0.15 doesn't go in. So that tells me that it's somewhere in the range of 0 0.10 and 0 0.15. So it's probably something like 0.12 or 0.13, but it's well within the tolerance. So, um, I'm, I'm happy that that's fine. If I can't get the 0.15 in there, but I can get the 0.10 in, then uh, it's, it's well within the 0 0.05 tolerance that the manual specifies. So I'll leave that one for now. What we need to do is move over to this side and again, get the 0 0.10 out, which is there. And put that in underneath. Ah. So there we are. As you can see, that one will not go in at all. So if I can't get the 0.10 in there, that means that that clearance has actually closed up. Now, things that could cause um, the uh, the clearances to close is obviously wear on the uh, the valve seat between where, where if you if you imagine the uh, the number of times that um, uh, a, a valve actually hits. The, uh, the valve seat on which it, um, you know, in order to close, it, it's, it's thousands, you know, thousands of times um, a minute. So 
it's going to wear uh, over over the life of an engine you're going to achieve, you know you, you're going to have wear and that's why they close um and this is why we do these checks so a 0 0.10 is not fitting in there at all so we know that it's too tight so it needs adjustment now on this engine to adjust it what we need to do is we need to fit a shim of of a different thickness um in order to bring the um the, in order to open it up in this case so obviously the shim that's fitted there is too thick um, and we need to fit, fit a thinner one um, I'll come on to how we're going to work out what size we need very very shortly but what I need to do in order to determine that is I need to actually work out what the current clearance is so what I'll do I'll, um, I'll go through all my gauges until I find out what the actual clearance is of that valve and then um, we'll go over to the whiteboard and we'll actually work out what size shim we actually require in order to bring that one back into spec okay so i'm having a bit of a play what i've done is i've actually gone and got a different set of feeler gauges because these ones have got a, a wider range of sizes so there's a point one again what i'll do i'll just double check that it won't go in and no it doesn't so what i want to do is obviously i need to determine what the actual clearance is in order to be able to work out what shim size i require in order to uh, bring it back into spec as i said a moment ago so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a varying degree of sizes. I've got 0 0.5, uh, sorry, 0 0.05, um, 0 0.06, 0 0.08. Um, so I'll you try all of those. So let's try 0 0.05 first. And that absolutely falls in. Uh, 0 0.05 goes in there really, really easy. And there's no drag at all. So that's not the one we need. 0 0.06, that's yeah that's not too bad uh, that that there was there is a slight bit of drag there that's probably where we where we are and i've got a 0 0.08 what i don't have obviously is a 0 0.07 uh, let's see if the 0 0.08 goes in no it doesn't 0 0.08 does not go in so it's either 0 0.06 or 0 0.07 i've got a 0 0.06 and there was a slight drag so we'll call it 0 0.06 so i'm content that the clearance that we've achieved there is 0 0.06 so we'll use that as our measurement in order to work out the shim we require and to bring it back in the spec so what we'll do now is we'll head over to the blackboard we'll do a little bit of calculating and work out what shim size okay so what we've done is i've moved over to the whiteboard as you can see here i've made a note of the um the spec clearances so 0 0.1 to 0.15 of a mil on the inlet, 0.15 to 0.20 on the exhaust. And obviously here I've done a diagram, cylinder one, two and three, inlet, exhaust, uh, inlet, exhaust, as you can see. So obviously so far all we've done is we've measured the clearances on cylinder three's inlet uh, valves. And we've determined that this one is too tight because it's 0 0.06, so it's 0 0.04 below the minimum specification so we need to open that one up um, I'll come on to that in a moment um, what I did was um, we, d we determined that this valve here was somewhere in the range of 0 0.10 to 0 0.15 it wasn't really it didn't really matter because I knew it was in that range but what I did was I've got another set of feeler gauges um, which have got some better uh, better ranges and as you can see I've got a 0.13 here and that one went in absolutely perfectly and there was ever such a slight drag on that uh, gauge as well so I can determine that that one is actually 0.13 again well within spec so um, as I discussed before what we need to do is we need to be able to work out um, what size shim we need to fit to this engine in order to bring this uh, this valve back into spec and there is a little bit of maths we can do in order to uh, achieve that. Um, alternatively, if you have a Haynes manual, I don't have a factory manual for this one. It's one of the few bikes I've actually not got a factory manual for. Um, but I've, uh, I've got a Haynes. And in the Haynes manual, there is a handy table. Um, basically, you, you look at the measured clearance and um, it'll tell you what size shim you need to fit in order to do it what i'll do i will take a picture of it and i'll put it up on the screen right now um if you want to uh make a note of it you can obviously pause the video here have a good look at it and then uh we'll uh, we'll move on to what we're actually going to discuss here so if you don't have that manual with that table what we can what you can do i mean this is the same for any bike it's not just um not just this this is exactly the same way you work out the valve clearances for any any uh bike and 
A equals B minus C plus D. Um, obviously, what I've done is I've listed what each of those things means. So B is the recorded spec, which in this case will be 0 0.06. So what we need to do is 0 0.06 minus the spec. So what we really uh, want to do is probably try and get it to the larger of the uh, the clearances because as i said before they tend to close up over time so if we get it to the larger of the specifications that gives that gives plenty of scope for it to close before we have to change it again and then what we need to do is add it to the thickness of the old shim um, that is currently fit to the bike now i haven't got that yet because i haven't actually taken the valves out uh, sorry the uh, the cams out in order to uh, access the valve um, and then i can take the shim out and measure the thickness using a micrometer um, quite often the uh, the size of the shim is actually marked on the shim itself um, uh, but if not a micrometer will will do the job just fine so what i'm going to do before we uh, get to um, a position where we're going to take all the cams out what we want to do is measure the clearances for everything and then we can work out any of that are too tight and we can get the specs for each of those and do the maths and work out where we need to be for every single one so at the moment we've got one out of spec so i'm going to move on to the exhaust what i'll do i'll run through the exhaust clearance with you obviously it's 0.15 to 0.20 it's exactly it's done exactly the same way but 0.15 to 0.20 on the exhaust on cylinder three and then what i'll do i'll whip through uh, cylinders two and one uh, and then i'll bring you back in um, when we get to the point where we have got to pull the cams out okay so obviously we've got the inlet camshaft uh, positioned for measurement of the inlet valves what we need to do is we need to rotate it now so that the exhaust camshaft on this cylinder um, is in that orientation so what i'll do i'll spin around and there we go it kind of you, you kind of feel it like drop into place uh, when you get to the right location Okay, so I've got a 0.15 feeler gauge. Now, this should go in. Uh, if it doesn't, then obviously these are too tight and um, we need to uh, investigate them a bit further. So I'm gonna take my 0.15 first and just gently feed it in there. And um, yeah, it goes in. If anything, I'd say it's probably slightly too loose. Um, however, ooh, no, it's in, there we go. I thought it wasn't going to go in then. Now that one uh, is in and I'm getting the right amount of drag that I would that I would expect. So 0.15 goes in there nicely and I'm getting exactly the uh, the feeling from the gauge that I that I would expect to get. So yeah, that one ever so slightly loose. Let me just check that a 0.12 uh doesn't go in there let me find the point sorry not point one two point two zero should i say and there's point two zero so let me get that in Ooh. and that is there with the perfect amount of drag so this one as is at the upper limit of the clearance and as i said before um, they tend to close up over time anyway so the fact that it's at the upper limit means it's got plenty of scope to close um and uh, we should be okay. So yeah, that point two um, feels exactly the way I would expect it to feel. So um, we'll call them good. Um, what I need to do is I need to make a note of that on the whiteboard. So the point one five on that side, point two zero on that side, we'll call that uh, that that good on the uh, on the exhaust side of things. Um, so that is cylinder three complete. What I need to do now is exactly the same process for cylinders one and two. Um, and then make a note of all the clearances that we achieve and then we can uh, move forward with how we're going to rectify any that are out of spec okay so as we can see i've gone through all 12 valves and what i've done is i've underlined the ones that fall outside of the specification as as um as you can see the 
exhaust ones are all fine every single one of them is is perfect and all of them with the exception of that one is actually at the upper limit of the tolerance so uh, they're, they're they're perfect um the inlet ones however which is actually quite surprising i would have expected to see the exhaust ones out of spec um if anything um basically based upon the fact that there's hot gas rushing rushing past the valve seats on those uh, on those valves uh, and not on these ones but um you know it's uh, it's, it's it, odd things happen sometimes i guess um so there's one on each cylinder uh both of these two are 0 0.06 which is 0 0.04 of uh, of a mil below the lower spec and this one is 0 0.04 which is obviously 0 0.06 below the minimum spec so we need to shim these ones uh they need to be shimmed out basically in order to open up the clearances because they've obviously closed up over time uh, i'm not sure um if this bike has ever had a valve clearance check done uh, i have absolutely no history to, to, uh, to show that that was the case um, so i don't know how long these they've been like that and the bike isn't running badly but obviously um it won't be running at its optimum with uh, with closed uh, valve clearances uh, because obviously as they get hot there's potential for these valves to actually not fully close at all um, and that will sap power so we do need to recover it so as i said before what we need to do is we need to work out what d is and in order to work out what d is we need to take the camshafts at the bike and measure the shim that is currently fitted below uh, all three um sorry above should i say all three of these valves uh, between between the valve and the shaft so what we'll do next is pull the shaft out um i'll show you how to do that and then we'll come on to actually measuring each of the shims luckily for us we don't actually have to remove the exhaust camshaft at all and um, that one can stay in situ it doesn't need to be uh, disturbed in any way shape or form so let's go back to the bike uh, sort out the timing get all the timing right and then set about pulling this shaft off okay then so back at the bike um obviously earlier on i said that you can just use your uh use the wheel with the engine in gear in order to rotate the engine and turn all the camshafts but obviously um with having to remove a camshaft this is coming to its own because you you need to take this cover off in order to do this next step so it's probably wise if you're going to carry out your valve clearance to actually order the gasket for this anyway and just use this method um to turn it over because as you can see now I would have had to get into here in order to remove the camshafts and if I hadn't bought the gasket we'd have been stuck and I'd have had to have bought it anyway. Okay so what we need to do in order to remove the camshaft we want to we want to set the time in um, in order so that we can when we come to refit it we can we can put it together and we're not going to have any issues. Now the sprockets both inlet and exhaust have an arrow on them and what we're aiming to do is get those arrows pointing towards each other. Um, I will rotate this nut in a moment and I'll come on to that uh, in just one second. Um, once we've got the, uh, the timing all set, what we need to do is we need to remove the, the uh, cam chain tensioner, which is just here. Removing that cam chain tensioner will take um, all the tension off this chain and we'll be able to move it. And this is the upper chain guide. There's four, four screws holding that in place. We'll take that off as well. And then um, we'll, uh, we'll be able to pull the chain off of this sprocket and then we could take the carrier caps off um, and uh, lift the camshaft out so first things first taking our 25 uh, sorry 24 mil spanner and looking on the end of here you can see t1 t2 and t3 what we are uh, interested in is the t1 mark and that t1 mark needs to align with the pickup just here so what I'm going to do is rotate the engine until such time as the T1 mark is aligned and there we go. Now it's not the bit that sticks out, the actual line mark for the T1 is just there right at the end of my fingernail and that is the mark that we're lining up with the pickup. And if we come up here, I'll get my torch out. We come up here and look at the shafts now we're not going to be able to see it on the um, exhaust one until such time as i've taken this off but if we look down here you can see the arrow hopefully you can pick that up on the camera there is an arrow on the face of the sprocket which is pointing that way and it's level 
with the uh, the surface of the cylinder head and there is a corresponding arrow on the exhaust camshaft which is pointing directly this way again level with the cylinder head so they are pointing exactly at each other and that is a timing set and ready to take this shaft out so what we need to do next is remove the tensioner remove the upper um, chain guide and then we should be in a position to take the caps off and lift the camshaft out okay so now we've got the timing where we want it to be what we're going to do first is we're going to remove the cam chain tensioner now it's in two parts the this bolt here um, there's a huge spring behind it which is obviously what applies tension to the tensioner itself and then the main body of the tensioner is held in with these two um, eight mil bolts and there is a gasket in between here obviously um, because th there's oil behind it um, the copper washer behind this bolt will obviously need to be replaced and as will the gasket um, on reinstallation. Uh, re so let me uh, crack this off. Now this bolt is going to be under quite strong spring tension so I just need to be careful. There we go, there it comes and we can withdraw it. So under here um, we've got the, uh, there's the washer that I was telling about, so we'll, um, well, in fact I don't actually need to replace it, I can just anneal it and it'll be as good as new uh, and we'll be able to reuse that. So what I'll do, I'll put that to one side and then what we need to do next is we need to remove these two bolts just here. the whole tensioner body can be removed from the engine. Having this catch pan down here is actually quite handy because I'm able to put all the bits in it. Right, are you going to come off? Yes you are, there we go. And there is the tensioner itself. Obviously, we're going to lose a bit of oil from inside, but there's a tensioner. Now, before we refit this, we will have to reset it, um, but we'll do that on reinstallation. I'll talk about how we're going to do that um, later. But uh, for now, that's that section done. We need to recover this gasket. Obviously, it's sticking. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll clean all that off uh, later and um, make sure that the face is all ready for a brand new gasket when we come to installing it again. Right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get um, the Torx bit that I require to take the upper cam chain guide off. There's four screws holding it in, two on this side, two on that side, and then we'll be able to take that off. Okay, these, uh, these four screws are T30 Torx. Um, in fact, all the ones on the cam cap are also T30 but we're not concentrating on them just yet so let's um, just crack them all off first and then I'll come back and take them all out there we go two three and last one four Okay, let's whip them all out. Okay, make sure we catch them all because we don't want them to fall down into the uh, crankcase because that would be bad. And there we are, that is the upper cam chain guide removed. So pop that back in there, right, and here we go. Now we can pull the chain off of the camshaft, as you can see. And uh, yeah, we can, we can literally pull it to one side and we would be able to remove the camshaft quite easily. Now, um, what I do want to point out, now we've got the um, now we've got the upper chain guide out of the way, we should be able to see 
the arrows on the outside of the sprockets. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, maybe if I shine through that way. No, that didn't make any difference. Yeah, you can. Uh, hopefully you can see the arrow um, and you can see the one on that one. And they are pointing directly towards each other. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm happy with them. And obviously when we come to reinstall them, they need to go back in in that orientation and that's how we make sure that we've got the timing correct. So what we need to do now is undo all the bolts on the bearing caps. There's four on each shaft. So one, two, three, and four. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these bolts out a little bit at a time or across the range. Um, Cause what we don't wanna do is put undue pressure on the shaft and potentially snap it because they're, um, they're cast and um, we don't want to break the castings. So what we'll do is we'll dick it up a little bit at a time and um, hopefully we shouldn't have any dramas. Okay, as I said before, exactly the same size Torx 230 again for these. Um, and we'll just crack them all off. And one. What I'll do. I'll go through all of these, get them all cracked off, and I'll bring you back at the end once we've got them all out and we're ready to pull the shaft off. Okay, as you can see, all of the bolts are removed. And all I need to do now is just pop the caps off of each one. So what we need to do, because they may be a little bit stuck, if you pull the, cap, the, the bolts out ever so slightly like this, and then just give them a wiggle backwards and forwards, you, you'll find that, the, there we are, like that. There is a dowel in there, and there's a dowel there as well. Um, they may come out with the caps, both of them may come out with the caps, or they may stay in where they are. That, that one feels like it's well in there. But what we need, do need to do is ensure that the cap goes back on um, in the same position that it was removed. Um, so what we need to do is need to keep them in order. So I've got a bit of bit of paper down here, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to remove all four. This one is a bit stiffer. Come on. Yeah, give it. Keep wiggling it until it comes off. There we are. Just like so. Yeah, make sure that the dowels, oops, the dowels don't come off and fall into the engine because that's not what we want. That'll be a, a pain in the ass if it does. So there, there's a dowel there, and that is this far end one. Again, the one that's hide under the frame, that one came off really, really easily. And I've got the dowel again right there. That one doesn't want to come out, and that one's still in there. So and lastly, there we go, we've got both dowels in the cap on this one. So, there we are, as what I'll do, I'll keep them all in order, so I know which way they need to be when they go back in. And next, what we need to do, Pull the camshaft out. Now it's simply a case of lifting it out of its location, pulling the chain off. The chain in this situation can be allowed to just drop um, and there is the shaft and there is the arrow that I was trying to point out. Now there's one on the inlet, one on the exhaust and they should point perfectly towards each other level with the cylinder head and what I'll do, I'll pop that down there and I will put that on the bench uh, very, very shortly. Okay, what we can do next is we can actually look at the shims themselves. Uh, what I'll do, I'll grab a little magnet as that will help us to pick up the shims off the top of the valves. Just putting these on the bench um, out of the way to keep them safe. And uh, I noticed this one's been etched with 30th of the 5th, 94. Now this is a 94 machine. And I can only assume that that is the date that the uh, the engine was built. So 30th of May 1994, this is the cap 
um, from the sprocket end of that shaft. But yeah, I thought that was quite a nice little touch and I thought it might be worth pointing out. Yeah, 30th of May 1994. So there you go. With the with the shaft removed, obviously we can see the, the top of the lifters and on, on the top here, this disc is the shim that we're talking about. Now I've got the magnet and what will happen is probably the whole thing will come out in one go because the lifter will be, uh, is a very tight fit into the top of the bucket. So what I'll do, I will pull it up with my magnet and as you can see, yeah, it's brought the whole lifter with it. Sit that to one side. Now obviously this was one of the ones that was out of spec. Um, again, going over to the board, you can see. So it's this one, that one, and the this one here on cylinder one that we need to uh, that we need to remove um, and what I'll do with a tiny little screwdriver is just gently pry up the shim and there we go there is the shim what I'll do I'll put the lifter back in its place and here's the shim now quite often you find that there is um, the, the size of the shim actually marked marked should I say on the actual shim itself but there's absolutely no markings on this whatsoever so what i need to do is uh, get my micrometer out and measure its thickness okay so i have the shim from this cylinder and obviously the clearance was 0 0.06 so what i'm going to do i'm going to put it in my micrometer close her up till the ratchet bites and there we go now we need to work it out uh one let's take it open a bit Right, so that's three mil, do, 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 and that's 2.55. So that is a 2.55 millimeter shim. So now what we can do is we can go back to our little calculation or the table if you've got the manual. But in this case, I'm going to use both options. So plus 2.55. Um, which is obviously the old thickness and this will give us the calculation to work out what size we need for the new shim so 0 0.06 minus 0 0.15 is obviously 0 0.09 minus add 2.55 to that and that will equal 2.46 so in order to bring that into um into spec uh, what we would uh, do is ideally fit a 2.46 millimeter shim. Um, they come in 0 0.05 of a mil increments, however, so um, I could either fit a 2.4 mil or a 2.5. Now, obviously, if I fit a 2.4 mil, that will make the clearance even bigger. If I fit a 2.5, it will make it slightly smaller. So, what I would expect to get if I was to fit a 2.50 mil, excuse me, right in. If I was to fit a 2.50 mil um, shim, I would expect the clearance to be at or around 0.11 because I've worked this out based on the upper clearance. So because I'm going 0 0.04 bigger on the shim, I would expect the clearance that I will achieve to be 0.11. Um, hopefully you, you get where I've gone with that. Um, um, you know with the maths it's, it's fairly simple maths anyway but yeah so I will have to order a 2.5 uh, mil shim for that one in order to bring it into spec if I was to fit a 2.4 millimeter shim the clearance would be far too big because it would if in, a, in essence you'd achieve a 0 0.21 um, millimeter clearance so Hopefully you get what I've, where, where I've gone with that and um, what we've done. So what I need for this is a 2.50 mil shim. So what I need to do is repeat that for all the other cylinders, sorry, the, the other um, two valves that are out of spec on the other two cylinders, doing exactly the same maths, and then I'll bring you back in once I've worked out what the shim sizes need to be. Okay, so I've carried out the measurement of the shims that were fitted to all three, and quite surprisingly, every single one of them was 2.55 mil thick. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I've, I, I, it's not beyond the realms of possibility, but uh, yeah, it's um, strange that they were all the same thickness and all out of spec. So yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly unusual. Anyway, moving on. 
what we need for this cylinder, that cylinder, is a 2.5 millimeter shim, and for cylinder one, we need a 2.45 millimeter shim. So, um, obviously, because that was a 2.55 before, uh, a 2.45 should make that clearance 0 0.14, so towards the upper end of the uh, of the tolerance, and a 2.5 should bring that one up to. 0.11 and the same obviously for that one 0.11 as well so yeah that's um what we need to do next so obviously i need to get onto uh, the internet and order those up i'll probably get them from fowler's parts because they're uh, the uh, the best place to get them from generally they they're normally quite quick as well so i'll probably have them by um some you know sometime during the week and uh, then i can come back and continue filming on this video so um what i'm going to do for now is i'm going to temporarily refit the cam cover back onto the bike just pop a couple of bolts in there um just to keep any uh, rubbish out um, because obviously i don't want uh, i don't want anything to get into the top end of the engine um i will put the side cover back on loosely with a couple of bolts and yeah that's uh, that's it i'll stick a sheet over the over the top of it and um what i'll do um, we'll come back to this once I've got the uh, replacement shims. So what I also need to order um, is a new gasket for the cam chain tensioner. Uh, and that, I think, is it. Unless I think of something else that I've completely forgotten right now. But I think, yeah, I think that's it. So three shims and a gasket. And we should be good. We should be golden. So obviously, um, this is going to be uh, about a second for you guys. But it's going to be probably nearer a week for me. So I will see you in a second. Okay guys, welcome back. Um, it's been a week, um, but the shims have arrived during the week while I've, uh, while I've been at work. We've got the, uh, the three shims that I ordered, as you can see. We've got two 250s and a 245. Now, um, funny little story. The, uh, the, the chap that owns this bike is my wife's stepfather. And he works uh, in a motorcycle parts wholesaler so if you go to stores like ebay and such and such um those guys are supplied by the firm for which he works um and i placed the order for these with a with a company on ebay and uh, i got a message from him saying ah oh, i think you've uh, just ordered shims from my bike because um obviously he recognized the address and recognized the model that they were going on um so that was quite uh, quite funny it was quite a small little world it was it was kind of weird um getting that anyway Enough of that, let's move on. Um, so what we need to do is we need to um, fit these shims into the respective locations where they're gonna go on the bike, replacing the ones that are currently on there. Obviously, I've still got them on the whiteboard, so I'll do a quick reference to that. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get them fitted. Right, so I've removed the, uh, the lifter from cylinder three, uh, cylinder three and look one that needs replacing, and I've taken the shim off, as you can see. So this, is, um, this one is 2.55, uh, of a mil thick, uh, so obviously we're going to replace that one with a 2.5 mil. Now, what I've got here is a mixture of black molly and engine oil. This is a 50-50 mix of black molly and engine oil. Um, black molly is molly denim disulfide um, and it's a assembly lube basically. You use it for this sort of stuff and what it is is effectively it's a little bit more persistent than just oil on its own. So when we um, when we come to assemble this, I'll, I'll liberally coat everything with this mixture, and that ensures that uh, when we first start it up, nothing's running dry, and everything will be perfectly good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the new shim, but I'm also going to give that a little coat of black molly as well, and I'm going to put it with the size markings facing down, just like it says in the manual. Again, another liberal coat of black molly, and we'll smear this all over the lifter just to make sure that she's nice and lubricated when we first start the bike. Right, this one can now go in, and what I need to do is repeat the process for the other two um, valves that were out of spec, fit in the new shims okay so that is all three of the shims replaced with um, the relevant ones to bring them back into spec uh, as you can see 
the uh, they've got molly on the top of them. Um, what I need to do now is obviously reassemble the bike, so I need to refit the camshafts and all that good stuff. But before I do so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get liberal again with my black molly. I'm going to coat all the bearing surfaces, all of these journals, just like this. All of these journals, coat them all in black molly. You can't overdo this stuff. It's there to serve a purpose. So let's get it all on there. And this will just ensure that she's well lubricated at the top end when it comes to reassembly. Okay, I think that should do nicely. So now we're ready to uh, we're ready to refit the camshaft. So what I need to do, go and grab it, go grab it basically, give it a little uh, give it a little clean, um, and then uh, we can look at fitting it back into the cylinder head. Okay, that's all the journals lubed. I'm quite happy with them. Now we need to put the camshaft back in. Now on the uh, on the cam sprocket, you can see the arrow here. That arrow there has to point towards the other sprocket so that they're both pointing towards each other. So it's going to go into the bike in that orientation. That arrow will also be perfectly level with the top of the cylinder head. Um, so that's worth bearing in mind. Uh, we can get it in, give it a wiggle, and then put the cam um, the uh, the cam caps on. And we may find that we're slightly off. Um, but what we can do, there's some spanner flats here. We can we can get a spanner on there, and we can adjust slightly as necessary before we hook the um, before we can hook the chain uh, into its correct position. Um, and uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in. Hopefully, what we'll do is I'll be able to show you most of this process. But obviously, with all the fairings in the way, it does make it a bit of a, a bit of a pain. Um, but I'll try my best. Okay, so it's obviously quite difficult to orientate and it's quite dark in here as well, so we've got to bear that in mind. I think we're roughly in the right place. Let me have a quick look. I actually think that I got it first time. If you look just in there, here's the arrow, and there's the arrow on the opposite camshaft. And as you can see, they're pointing perfectly at each other. So I think I actually got that first time, which I'm quite pleased about. Um, so what I'll do, I'll just double check everything, and then we'll get the camshaft, uh, the camshaft caps on. Okay, what I'm just gonna do next is again, a little bit more black molly over the top of the shafts. And just stick a bit over the actual cams themselves. Everything in here is well lubricated. We're not gonna have any problems as far as that's concerned. Right then, put that to one side. What we need to do now is we need to fit the caps. Now, what I said uh, in the uh, when I took them off was to keep them in um, keep them in order so that they go back on in the way that they came off. And that's a good idea. Um, one thing I will point out is that the caps themselves are actually marked. This one has a letter B on it, and this one is the one that goes right at the front in next to the cam sprocket and this one has a number six number six goes here the other two have a five and a four respectively five goes here four goes here there's a little um there is actually a little uh, picture in the haynes manual what i'll do is i will put that up right here now so you can see what i mean and um that is the order that the caps go back on they've handily been numbered uh, they've actually been etched uh, by the factory so so what we need to do now <clears throat> I did take the dowels out of each one actually, and I've refitted them back onto the cylinder head so that they don't want to fall out. Um, and we're simply going to pop each of the caps back on to their respective locations. This dowel here on this one did not want to come out for love nor money, so I've left that one. 
cut there and that's cut there. Okay. Right, what we need to do now is we need to put the bolts back in. Um, the manual says to lightly oil them, uh, so I will do just that, and then fit them. Um, it's quite unusual to oil um, threaded fasteners that are going to be torqued to a specific torque setting. However, the manual says that, so we will do it. Um, they're only torqued to 10 newton meters anyway, um, but what we need to do is we need to tighten them down progressively so that the camshaft is tightened down progressively. Basically, we'll do them in a crisscross pattern, moving from the outside inwards till they're all done. We'll snug them all up and then we'll come along and we'll torque each one to 10 newton meters. So I'll go grab the bolts and that's what we'll do next. All of them all up, one at a time. That's one. There we go, right. Now what we need to do is we need to snug them all down progressively, as I said before. So we'll get them, I'm taking them all down till they're sitting, so the head of the bolt is sitting on the actual cam cap. I've not actually tightened anything, all I'm doing is just getting them to the position where we're gonna start pulling down the cam caps. These ones under the, uh, under the frame of the bike are actually a real pain to get into. Um, so I'll have to switch tools to torque these ones up um, because this one's just too long. Okay, right. Now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to snug each one down a bit at a time in a crisscross pattern until they're all snugged up and then what I'll do I'll go back around them all and tighten them all to 10 newton meters so what I'll do I'll go around I'll do all of that and I'll bring it back in when we're ready and everything's tightened Okay, so that is all eight bolts uh, refitted and torqued, and all I need to do next is just double check the, um, that the arrow is in the position it's supposed to be. Um, I have no reason to believe it shouldn't be, um, <clears throat> because the chain is still over the, over the sprocket in exactly the same position I put it in. What we need to do next though, is we need to fit the tensioner for the chain. Um, so I'll grab that, what we need to do is we need to reset it prior to fitting it with a new gasket. Right, so everything's torqued down. What we want to do is we want to be able to turn the engine over um, a couple of times just to make sure that everything um, operates as it should and all that sort of stuff and everything re lines up when I come back to this mark. Um, so before we can do that, we need to refit the tensioner. Otherwise, what will happen is if I try and turn it before this is in, the chain will jump a tooth. So this, uh, this tension, this is an automatic tension, it operates under spring. And here there's a little detent, which if I compress it, allows it to go back in. And you can see, under spring pressure, this will pop out as required and will be retained in that position by this paw, um, effectively. So once it's out, it can go back in without me physically opening that with my thumb and pushing it back in. So, in order to refit it, what we need to do is we need to um, put it back into that position and um, 
refit it to the bike. Now, the, the manual gives you a couple of different options of um, how to reset and refit these. Um, the way that I do it is the way that I do it and it works for me and I've never had a problem. So this is the way that I do it. If you wanna do it a different way, then by all means, but um, this is the way that I prefer to do it. So what we need to do is firstly, remove the little bit of um, tissue that I had blocking the hole up um, just to stop anything getting in there. We need to then take our brand new gasket and our bolts, put them through. That just holds the gasket in place and stops it trying to turn around. And then, oops, get it in the right way up. And then just fit it back onto the cylinder head. With a little bit of wiggling around, we should be able to get the bolt started. Come on. Now the top one's been a bit of a bugger. Let's have a bit of a wiggle. See what's going on. There we go, we started. Right. So now these need to be tightened up and torqued to nine newton meters. So let's get them done up. Eight mil. Gonna do it to touch first. Like so. And there we are, that's their main and tightened up. Now what we need to do next is we need to set the plunger against the chain. Now the way I like to do that is to simply apply light pressure through the plunger and push it out. You may hear it click, I'm not sure if it'll pick it up on the camera. And all we're doing is applying finger pressure until we meet resistance, which I have now. And just double check. Yeah, there we go. That is set. As far as I'm concerned, that uh, plunger is now set in the position it needs to be. Next, we take our spring. Now there are service limits to these springs. I can't remember what the figure is off the top of my head now, but I have measured it with a set of, um, with a set of calipers, and this is still within service limits. I think it was 71.3 millimeters. I, I can't actually remember the figure, but it's in the manual. Um, I'll, I'll actually put the, the service limit length uh, down below right now. Um, so what we need to do next, to fit that spring. Here we have a ceiling washer. Now this ceiling washer is the one that I took off. All I've done is I've annealed it so it's as good as new. Um, obviously if you want to refit a brand new one that's entirely up to you but uh, an annealed used one is as good as a brand new one. What we do next is fit the plunger into the housing. You may get another click or two from the from the um, from the tensioner as we go in. That's fine. And then what we've got to do uh, is find the right size socket. I can't remember what size this one was. Was it 19, I think? I think it was 19. Yeah, 19. And then we'll tighten this up to touch and torque it to 23 Newton meters. So I need to adjust my torque wrench to 23. So, and then tighten her up. And there we go. 23 newton meters and that ceiling washer should be perfectly good. Right then, what we can do now is we can turn the engine over. 
Okay, before we uh, before we do turn it over, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. We haven't actually fitted the upper uh, upper chain guide, so it's four bolts, four Torx uh, T30s, and again, just a case of popping the the guide in place and fitting all four screws. All four of these screws are then tightened to twelve newton meters. Um, just obviously being careful not to drop any of the screws because that will be a pain. I mean, if you did drop them down here, hopefully they would come out here anyway at the bottom by the crank. Um, but there is a possibility that they could get caught up in the chain somewhere and cause you a headache when you have to go fishing for them. So just be careful. Three and four. Okay, now we can get our big spanner and we can turn the crank a uh, minimum of twice and hopefully everything should line back up when we bring it back around to this mark. Okay, now we are ready to turn the crank. So if I turn the crank, well, currently the, the arrow is still aligned as it should be. Um, so now I can turn this crank. Now we wanna go a minimum of two full turns because um, two turns at the crank is one turn on the, uh, on the camshafts. So back to T1, now both arrows are pointing directly away from each other, which is good so far. Still feels good. What we're looking for is any, any resistance at all. And what we're gonna do now is realign it back to the T1 mark as we had it before. Now what I'm doing, I'm just looking at the arrows and the arrow on both shafts. Let me just check that one. Yep, the arrows on both shafts are pointing perfectly at each other, level with the cylinder head. So I am happy that they are good. So now what we do need to do is we need to check the clearances on the three valves that, um, that we've disturbed effectively, because obviously we've replaced components. So we need to check that they are actually now within spec. So the process is exactly the same as the way we did it before. All I need to do is rotate each um, cylinder so that the valves are diametrically opposing the valve that we're going to check and then run the feeler gauges through. Make sure that we've got a light drag on each one at the spec that we're expecting it to be. So what I'll do, I'll do all that, double check that they're all good and then we'll bring it back in um, and we'll continue the reassembly. Okay, so. Um, I've carried out a clearance check on the uh, on the inlets again and they are now all within spec. They're all between 0.1 of a mil and 0.15 of a millimeter. So obviously um, what we've done here has worked. Right, next thing we want to do is get the cover back on uh, on this side uh, because we no longer need access to this anymore. Um, what I've done, I've given the, uh, the mating surfaces a really good clean and likewise on the cover i've cleaned that off um as well because uh here's all the the gammy old gasket um what i do need to do is go and grab the new gasket um and uh get it fitted onto onto the engine case but what i'm going to do we before we begin is i'm going to take a little bit of black silicone i'm going to squeeze a tiny bit out here I'm not going to go crazy with this stuff. Um, I know some people like to use it all the way around, but there's absolutely no need. Um, but what I'm going to do is just put a little bit over where the rubber bung for the electrical connector to the to the timing pickup is. And the reason for that is because if it's going to leak anywhere, it will leak there. And as we've discussed previously, this is a Triumph and they have a propensity to leak oil um, just for fun. So that should help um, seal up there. And uh, yeah, so we should be good. Right, let me go and grab the gasket. We'll get the gasket on, we'll get the cover on and we'll get the bolts in. Okay, here's our, uh, here's our new gasket. And this is a genuine Triumph gasket. And what we wanna do is obviously get it orientated correctly. Now, you may notice that the space between these two bolt holes is wider than all the others. Um, so we need to make sure 
we get it the right way around, uh, which is not that way, it's that way. And there we are, as you can see, it'll only go on one way. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop a couple of bolts through, like so, and that should help us keep the gasket aligned and just get them started. And there we are. So now I can go around, fit all the bolts into their respective locations. There is a little bit of wiggle room with this. Get them up to touch. And the last one. There we go. Right, now, torque setting for these is 12 Newton meters. They don't need to be leaned on. And there we go, that's them all talked up. And uh, yeah, that should be good. A um, little bit of uh, sealant squeezed out. Just wipe it up there and that should be all good. Right, next thing we need to do is get the cam cover back on. Right then, next on the agenda is to replace the uh, cam cover gasket. And these little O-rings here are all the seals for where the bolts go in. As you can see, the old ones are here and they're all brittle and horrible. So that's a full set of replacements to go in all of those. We could do them right at the end as we, um, as we fit the, uh, the bolts. We don't need to do that yet. Okay, what we do need to do is we need to fit this bad boy. And as you can see, it's one big long thing with the uh, pro the profiles for the spark plug holes integrated into it and it will go on that way around so that the uh, these half moon semicircles point upwards like so what we want to do is we basically want to make it so that it stays in place as we uh, as we fit it to the bike now what we're going to do to help with that is just stick a little bit of sealant around the cam cover. We don't need to go crazy with this. It's, as I said, it's only to help us get it on. So I'm gonna put a little bit all the way around. And that'll probably do the job. Okay, so pop that down there and stick the lid back on for a second. And then what we'll do is we will take our gasket, ensure that we've got the orientation correct. Again, we need to make it so that the semicircles point upwards. And then simply fit it into position on the cam cover 
Now this is quite messy, so I'll probably have to go and wash my hands once I've done this. So let's get it all in place. There is a little ridge as you can see, and that ridge is just what we're popping into place all the way around the cover. said earlier when I was coming to take this off I'll put that to one side so that can start to dry off a bit what I said before on the cylinder head was that they were sealing all the way around it no there doesn't need to be I've looked in the manual and what it says is um, pop a little bit into the corners of the um, cylinder head and pay particular attention to those semicircles as I said before so what I'll do I'll grab the sealant out and just give a light smear to each of those sections that it specifies in the manual and then we can look at getting the cover on okay so uh, as you can see i have added a little bead of the silicon around the uh the corners of the cylinder head each corner's got it and obviously it's into the uh the semicircles as well at the ends of the crank so we're now ready to fit the cover before we do that what i'm going to do i'm going to pull these out so that they don't get trapped at all um, I don't want them to I don't want a bit of paper to be trapped between the cam cover and the cylinder head so I'd rather just take them out now and there we go I'll throw them down there okay so this has a little bit of time to uh, to go off it's been about 15 minutes or so um, hopefully we should be able to turn it over and it doesn't all fall off like so so what we need to do now is get it in so what may happen here is i catch it and it falls off um there may be a little bit of swearing so what i'll do if that happens i'll try and protect you from that because um this can be a bit of a challenging task trying to get this in um without knocking off the gasket but i'll try my best in place what I need to do is just check all the way around for the gasket to make sure it hasn't come off and it has actually at this end so I'll we'll just tuck that back into position we're good at this end I'll go and double check the other side absolutely perfect so now what we'll do is I'm just feeling inside the spark plug cavities just to make sure that the gasket stay where it's supposed to and again at this end it appears to have dropped out of position And there we go right we're all on 
what we need to do now is fit the bolts and torque them on obviously we need to fit the the little round gaskets um, prior to fitting the bolts so I'll go and grab them out of the bag we'll get them on and we'll get the uh, get the bolts fitted okay so I've got all of the, uh, the gaskets to go in now one thing I do want to point out briefly is if you feel them with your fingernail that side feels quite hard and that side is quite soft as you can see I can compress that side in quite easily and that side doesn't now obviously it stands to reason that that side goes down and the the bolt the head of the bolt basically acts on the on the hard side so we need to make sure we get them in the right way round uh, if we don't get them in the right way round then they won't be sealing like they should There we go, all right, that's all of them on. What we'll do, grab a few of the bolts. Obviously, remembering that, the two long ones go at the sprocket end. And just wiggle the cam cover around to ensure that we line up the bolts again get them all in by hand get them all in and started first before we go around tighten any up because if if we tighten any down and the cam cover is not fully aligned we'll find that we won't be able to get the rest in so it follows logical order that way and there we go right what I'm going to do now is tighten them all down again it's a good practice to do it in a uh, crisscross pattern so that it sits down snugly and the gasket makes a good seal. So what I'll do, I'll get them all down and then I'll torque them up. They're done to 10 Newton meters. Um, they're not overly tight, but that'd be more than enough to um, squish the gasket and make sure we get a good uh, um, oil tight seal. So yeah, well, I'll get on with that and then I'll bring it back shortly. Okay. That is the cam cover refitted, all the bolts are in, they're all torqued down and I've double checked the uh, the gasket and it is all sitting as it's um, supposed to all the way around. There's no pucker in, it's not come out of any uh, any of its little grooves so uh, I'm happy that it's going to be oil tight. Now what I also did was I took the um, I took the liberty of fitting all the three all three of the spark plugs back in um, and they are also torqued in. What I need to do now is basically we fit everything else onto the bike all the bodywork um all the uh, little panels the fuel tank etc etc the, the the work for this bike is now done and it's ready for an mot so yeah I, I i can refit everything so what i'll do i'll go through that get everything back on and then what we'll do um i'll stick a bit of fuel in the tank and we'll fire her up and hopefully she'll run like a dream um so i'll bring you back in just one second okay as you can see, the bike is now back together. Um, the bike hasn't been this together for quite some time because we've been doing a lot of work on the old girl. So um, I never bothered putting all the panels and everything back on, so I left them all off. But this is the first time in quite some time it's all been back together. Now, what I've done is um, I've put a little bit of juice in the tank, probably only about half a litre, because um, I don't see the point in putting too much in there just for it to sit in the garage and, uh, and go off. Um, so what we need to do now is um, just fire her up and make sure that she runs. So what I'm going to do, bit of choke because it'll be so cold and turn on the ignition. Right, here we go. Contact. Okay, 
ran up to temperature uh, till the fan kicked in basically and she's running and idling absolutely beautifully as you could hear it is absolutely silky so i'm happy with uh with her she's uh had quite a lot of work up to this point but uh now she's uh she's ready for an mot and i'm highly confident that um she, she will go through the mot absolutely no problem whatsoever so that will be the uh, the next thing that i'll do and i may well um as i did with my vfr i may well take you along for the ride when i go to uh go to get it tested so um yes that's you know uh, keep an eye out for that video Anyway, what, uh, what I'll do, I will link in the video description below all the stuff that I used for this process, where I got the shims from, the gaskets, the black molly, all of that stuff. I'll stick it all in the description below so you can go and uh, check that out if you wish. Um, yeah, uh, ch check out my uh, Kev Shed pages on all the socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Um, hit, hit me up on any of them. Uh, some of them are quite comical. There's some good funny um, memes and stories on those uh, that you can get involved in. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the series of videos uh, with the old uh, Triumph Sprint. Um, hopefully uh, it won't be the last, I'll get to do some more work on her at some point uh, in the future. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out for those. Anyway guys, thank you very much for stopping by and I'll see you all again very soon. Take care, bye bye now.